Hello, guys. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Campbell Nicholas. Oh, sorry, my bad. Okay, guys. Uh, Albert Stone Matthew. Albert Stone Matthew. Can you hear me, guys? Can you hear me? Uh, yes, yes, sir. Okay. So, oh. <clears throat> Albert Stone Matthew is not here, right? But the idea. But the area. Carpenter Caleb. Here. Davis Alexis. Davis Alexis. Yes, sir. Glasgow Robert. Here, sir. The area. Please try to come in time. Gonzalez Judith. Here. Avner Cameron. Here. Janel Christopher. Yes, sir. Zarka Andrew. Yes, sir. Liney Cooper. Yes, sir. Maza Hilvel Lazara. Maza. Yes, sir. <coughs> Pardew Virginia. Hey, what's wrong with her? She is not here since last three days. Pardew, Virginia. Okay. Powell Walker. Here, sir. Payton. Here, sir. Payton, okay. Charles Scarf. Yes, sir. Simon Rice, Simon Rice, Soto Girao, here, sir. Taylor Ismail, Taylor Ismail, to Nicholas, here, sir. Wes John Marshall, here, sir. William St. Thomas, here, sir. Zekwe is a Rachel. Here, sir. Rachel, where are you? I'm here, sir. Okay, good. Again, uh, Simon Rice, Taylor Smile, Bud Dairia. Here, sir. And Anderson Matthew. And Pardew, Virginia. Okay.
Okay, guys, so let me share my screen. Uh, I'm going to post all your practice test example today, very soon. Uh, so, uh, is our, what day is our test? Most likely it would be on Monday or Tuesday. We will discuss tomorrow. Most likely, okay. I would say Tuesday probably, but we will discuss tomorrow. Just remind me. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So we started the trigonometric integration yesterday and the first part of the trigonometric integration is sine and cosine function, sine to the power m and cosine to the power n. And I told you that if m and n both are both greater than or equal to zero, but if m is m is odd, that means to k plus one, right? That means the saving factor is a sine factor because 2k plus 1 can be written as sine to the power 2k and one sine factor you can separate out. So that's a saving factor. And this sine 2k can be written as sine square x to the power k and sine square x is 1 minus cosine x and that cosine x is your u. Exactly reverse process over here when your n is odd, cosine factor is the cosine x that's the saving factor. M and N both he one that means cosine square x sine square x can be written by the trick formation one plus cosine two x and one minus cosine two x by two. And uh, if M and N both are odd, that means either you can go for case one or case two, and then after we solve a couple examples based on this one. So we finished this part, and I hope that all you guys have gone through these things. I told you yesterday, please try to work with me. If you think that you can work only before a day of the test or a couple of days before the test. This trick integration and some other things will bother you. Trust me, guys, that's my experience. So I request you always, please daily spend at least two hours, at least two hours, actually three hours, but at least two hours daily. Otherwise, you will be stuck. And if you are not good with this chapter, that means you are going to face lots of problems in your next courses, like uh, DFEQ 311, like this. So this is the last reminder. If you want to follow me, that's fine. If you don't want to follow me, it's your course. I don't want to say anything more. Anyway, guys, so we solve this one and today we are going to start the second part. Second part is nothing but tangent to the power mx and secant to the power nx. Tangent m and secant n. m is greater than or equal to zero. n is greater than or equal to zero, right? Or equal to zero, m and n m or n could be equal to zero to so in that case only we will be having second to the power nx or tangent to the power mx if some other part is zero is just one <laughs> right good always try to compare the things whatever we have done yesterday for sine to the power m and cosine to the power n why because derivative of sine x is cosine x derivative of cosine x is negative sine x Negative is okay, but sine and cosine. It turns to either sine or cosine. If sine is there, cosine, cosine is there, ne sine or negative sine. And that's the reason why we saved our sine factor, I mean the sine x and cosine x, because negative derivative is either sine x or cosine x. But here, what is the derivative of, uh, I would say, derivative of uh, what, tangent x? Derivative of tangent is secant square x, am I right? Your calc 1. And that's why whenever you are working with, suppose tangent to the power m and secant to the power n, and suppose n is even, now we are talking about the even terms, not the odd term like previous case. So if n is even, n is even, even means n equal to 2k, k is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. Right? So if you take k equal to 1, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, and so on, like this, 16. So second to the power nx can be written as second to the power n is 2k, so 2kx. The same thing, same thing, but here now I'm not taking second square and outside and to the power k. No, I am taking 2k minus 2 and 2k plus 2. Means I am adding 2 over here and I'm subtracting 2 here. Please try to focus completely, please, guys. 
2k plus 2, 2k minus 2, or 2k minus 2, 2k plus 2. If you add and subtract 2, that means you are not going to change your function. But this 2k minus 2, we can write it down like this. And 2k, this plus 2 parts, second square x, that is my saving factor. Because I am going to choose over here my u equal to u sub is tangent x and derivative of tangent s is second square x. That is the reason why we are selecting here or we are saving second square x factor here. If you write second x, that won't work because your u after a couple of steps will be tangent x. So derivative of tangent x. In short, now if you go back to the first case, and that's the reason I told you yesterday to go over that sine to the power m, cosine to the power n, because I require that thing over here too. I'm comparing each and every term every time. So, because yesterday I had u equal to either sine x and cosine x, and the derivative of sine x is cosine x, cosine x is negative sine x like this, and that's why I saved just sine x or cosine x respectively. But here, derivative of tangent x is second square x, and that's why I have to save second square x over here. Other way around, suppose my m is e1, something like this. m is e1. Another thing is, if you write n is e1 at that time, always you are going to use your u, u sub as the tangent x. Just go, let me go back slightly. Look at here. Look at here. Mm. Sine to the power mx. I started with m odd, means I am working with power of sine. And that's why my use of was related to the other function cosine x. Look at here, cosine x. Right? And this derivative of cosine x is sine x, and I work with this one. Same here. My n is odd, means I'm working with my second power now. Second power. Ismail Taylor says that, good morning, sir. I've been working, I've been facing some connection issue, experiencing some connection issues, and I'm unable to join the calculus to stream in this morning. Uh, yeah, technology bothers sometimes. I can't do anything. What I don't know what to do. Is it okay if I ask him to start his cell phone? Because in cell phone, probably we don't, right? He can start the Zoom meeting on cell phone. If uh, his laptop or uh, it's not working, your know, cell phone, he won't face any problem in cell phone. You I mean, I don't have a data connection in my house, so I, I can use cell phone if my wife I got out. Oh, okay. Yeah, I just send them. Let's see. Anyway, guys. So, same here. Cosine to the power n. I'm working with the second part now. Cosine to the power n. That's why my u sub would be sine x. Look at over here. My u sub is sine x. Look at here. Exactly same theme over here. Whenever you are working with power n, n is, of course, even here, but power of second means my u sub would be the other function tangent x. Look at here. Right, and because I know that derivative of this tangent is second square x, and that's the reason I am saving here second square x. It's not not like this that I'm going back and the, I mean I'm going forward and then after I'm going back. No, it's not like this because I'm working with this one, and that's why my use of must be with respect to other function and derivative of that other function is second square x, and that's the reason I'm saving here second square x. It's not randomly. It's not like this that I like this one and that's why I choose this one. No, it's not like this. The theme is like this. Okay. Once you are done with your saving factor, you're almost done because now second to the power 2k minus 1 can be written as now 2 common. So 2 out in the bracket k minus 1. And this 2 common means I can write it down second square x to the power k minus 1. And second square x is again trick identity 1 plus tangent square x, second square minus tangent square equal to 1. So second square is 1 plus tangent square x to the power k minus 1. And second square x. So let me plug this value in my original equation, integration. So tangent to the power mx as it is, second to the power nx, I just wrote it down in a simplified form in this way. 
1 plus tangent square x to the power k minus 1 secant square x dx right and then after i'm choosing my tangent x as i explained to you my tangent x equal to u derivative secant square x so this secant square x dx is my du 1 plus u square to the power k minus 1 u to the power m and then after i can merge these two functions by multiplication on like this i can first go for suppose k equal to 1 or 2 or 3 i can just use the square form or cubic form like this and try to write in a linear form and multiply with this one and try to get, go for the integration simple same way suppose now my m is c here and e1 but here i'm choosing now m all look at my cursor m is all m is all m is all that means I have to use my u equal to secant x. Agree? What is derivative of secant x? What is derivative of secant x? The here. Derivative of secant x. Rachel. Rachel. Is it secant x tangent x? Secant x tangent x, and that's why now we are going to save secant x tangent x as a saving factor. Right? John Marshall West, are you okay? You are looking very sleepy. I'm perfect. I'm I'm watching. I can understand. Sorry about this. Um okay. So M is odd. If m is all, that is m equal to 2k plus 1, m equal to 2k plus 1, this tangent, I didn't write separately now, tangent to the power 2k plus 1. I want to save one factor from here and one factor from here because tangent as you can decide my saving, it has to be my saving factor now. So I'm taking one term from tangent here to get plus 1, so just 2k here. And one term from here, so secant x tangent is my saving factor, and n minus one is over here. This two k can be written as square to the power k. Tangent square is secant square x minus one. Take identity secant square minus tangent square equal to one. So sec tangent square x equal to secant square x minus one, and secant to the power n minus one x as it is. And this is my saving factor. And as I told you, by u equal to secant x derivative secant x tangent x. This is my du. This is my u square minus 1 to the power k and u to the power n minus 1, n minus 1. And then after I can just simplify this part and multiply with this one and try to get the answer, try to go for the integration. So n is e1, n, n is e1, first case, m is odd, second case. Now n is odd and m is reverse way. n is odd, n second to the power is odd, and m is e1, exactly reverse than first two case. Okay, so let me take suppose m equal to 2k. So, or I would say that here I chose m equal to odd. Here I can say n equal to odd or m equal to e1, right? First case says that n e1, then m odd. Now, m odd and m e1. m e1 is m equal to 2k. m equal to 2k means Whenever you have m in this case, in that case, convert tangent to the power mx to secant square x minus 1 to the power k and expand the new integral. Then integration by parts will give you with dv equal to secant square x dx. Right? I will let you know. Don't worry. So when m is even tangent to the power mx, m equal to 2k, tangent square x and k, secant square x minus 1 and k. Right, and then just write it down like this. The tangent is secant square x minus one to the power k and secant to the power. This is my u and this is v. So u into v rule. You have to use u into v rule whenever you are. N is odd and m is even. And finally, m is even but n is zero. Simple. M is even and n is zero. That's a simple case. Why? Tangent to the power mx equal to tangent to the power m minus one and tangent square x. Because m is tangent to the power mx is the only factor left out. Second to the power 0 is just 1. So, tangent square x is a saving factor. You can write it down like this. m minus 2 and square. And tangent square x is second square x minus 1. So, tangent to the power m minus 1x. I'm sorry, m minus 2x. And second square x minus tangent to the power m minus 1x times 1. So, here. 
plug this value over here. So now tangent to the power m minus 2x and secant square x, you can apply rule number one over here because look at here, n is odd, uh, sorry, n is even. So apply rule number one, n is even. And here tangent to the power, again apply rule number four. So again dilute this one, this power m is diluted over here to m minus two. If you apply the same rule again, it would be diluted to again m minus four or like this. So just proceed further with the same rule. That's what it says. I want to give all you guys two minutes and I want you to refer this thing thoroughly, all these four rules, mainly first two rules. Just go through all these four rules, open your canvas or you can use this one, I don't mind. Look at here and try to follow this one. Try to read this one slowly. Try to digest all these things. If you have some doubt, you can ask me. I give you two minutes, your time starts now. Okay, guys. Yes, sir. Okay guys, let's start. First example. Examples are enough. No, I mean, say that's, they are easy. Look at over here. Tangent to the power mx second to the power nx dx. You can use any one of these two rules. Look at over here. Here, of course, n equal to e1 my, means first example. But you can say like this, see m equal to e1 also. So m is e1, m is e1, m equal to 2k. You can use rule number three also, right? But it says that n is odd and m is even. So for rule three, you have to have n is odd. So that's why I would say that don't go for rule three, just stay with rule one. So rule one says that when m is, sorry, n second to the power n, n is even, n is even, right? And m is even. Here m is odd in that case probably, 
Mm, M is E1. I'm sorry. M is E1 and N is R. Yeah. So N is R. In that case, you can go for third rule. But here it says that N particularly that is E1. So let's stay with the first rule. First rule says that N is E1 means 2K, right? Then saving, fact, saving factor is second square X. So I can save directly like this. Second to the power 4X and second square X is separate. This is separated out. So 10 square x second square x to the power 2 from here because second to the power 4 can be written as second square x to the power 2 and that's what our theory says. Look at over here. That's what that rule says. Look at here. That once you choose n equal to 2k then reduce the power by 2. Look at here. To save second square x here. And that's what I did. Here it is 4, 2k minus 2 is 4 and second square x. And then I said, I, I, what I did, I took second square x separately and k minus 1 power. Second to the power 4 can be written as second square x. I have to have second square x over here to the power 2 because 2 into 2 is 4. So that makes sense, right? And second square x is a same factor like this. So just pay attention over here. Uh, second square x, second square x square, and second square x saving factor. And now, as you as you know that u equal to second x. If you plug these values, or if you can uh, write second square x as one plus tangent square x first, and then take u equal to tangent x. So u equal to second square x. Just plug the values. U square one plus u square square du du. As I told you, you can simplify this factor. So 1 plus u square square, perfect square, can be written as 1 plus 2 u square plus u to the power 4. Term by term multiplication, so u square, 2 u to the power 4, u to the power 6. Integration is u to the power 3 by 3, 2 u to the power 5 by 5, u to the power 7 by 7. Plug your value of u, tangent cube x by 3 minus 2 tangent to the power 5 by x plus tangent to the power 7 by 7 x by 7 plus c. Look at over here, such an awkward integral with very unusual powers, right, can be integrated using this trick formation, trick formula. Look at over here, right? So whenever you have some higher trick powers at that time, you don't have any other choice except to use the appropriate trick formulas or trick formation. Let's go for one more. See, I, for you guys, I wrote it down, rule number one to number two, so that whenever you refer this classwork on Canvas or on YouTube, you can come to know which rule I'm talking about or which rule is to be implemented for the given example. My second example is tangent cube as second to the power 4x dx. Now you can see my n, m equal to odd and n is even. M is odd and N is equal. I can go for rule number one or I can go for rule number three also because my rule number three, look at over here, what was my rule number three? My rule number three, N, no, N is odd and M. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Pardon me. M is even and N is odd. My tangent to the power M, M is not even here. N is odd. And again, second to the power 4X means my N is even. So again, I have to stay with rule number one. Second to the power of 4x can be written as second square x and second square x as second square x as my saving factor. This second square x can be written as one plus tangent square x, right? So I can write it down like this and then u equal to tangent x, so d equal to second square x, plug the values. This term by term integration will provide you u to the power four by four, power six by six and c. Plug the value of u and you are done. It's simple, just four steps answer, right? Or somebody says that, no, I want to go for rule number two because look at over here, my M is odd here, right? Rule number two says M, M is odd. So one example can be solved by two, three different ways, two different ways. So M equal to odd. M equal to odd, rule number two, my saving factor must be second X tangent X. So tangent cube X can be written as tangent square X so that I can take one, I can pull out one tangent factor and one second factor from here, second X tangent X. This tangent square x can be written as second square x minus one by trick formula. U equal to second x and du equal to second x tangent x. This is my du, this is my u square, u square minus one, and this is u cube. Again, multiply each term by u cube, so u to the power five and u cube and du, 
integration just by 6 u to the power 6 by 6 and minus u to the power 4 by 4 plus c plug the value of u second x so second to the power 6x by 6 minus second to the power 4x by 4 plus c just look at over here four steps answer right once you apply proper rule or here also either one see four steps answer right guys so it's same it's almost same yeah here also suppose somebody might may have some argument like this that why we are getting the answer in terms of secant x and here it is tangent x because our use of is different in both the cases another part is you can convert this tangent x or secant x as uh, secant square x to the power cube and secant square x and square x and secant square x is equal to 1 plus tangent square x so write down tangent square x over here so you are going to get the second term second to the power 4x same if you convert to tangent x second square x and square you are going to get the first term you look at over here divided by 4 divided by 6 like this and this c whatever minus six, tangent square x plus 1 or whatever it may be that constant 1 by 6 1 by 4 that is merged with this constant c so ultimately both are same so don't say that they are different no they are same right but i don't mind if you can stop over here i don't want you to go to exactly the same it is to be understood that you can use the trick formula and try to go for the same answer so i will accept this one as the answer that's not a big deal only thing is i just want you to apply the proper rule either the first one or second one it's your choice just the proper rule okay Third rule, or I mean to say third case. What was the third rule? Third rule says that m is or n is even. Okay. And m is even and n is or. M is even and n is or. Here says m even and n zero. Okay. Second cube x. Look at over here. Second cube x. So n is odd now. Right? N is odd. N is or means I can again say like this that second square x and second x dx. Rule number three says that I have to use u into v rule by parcel fraction. I mean to say uh, u into v rule, Liet rule. Right? Look at here. U, one is u, one is v or dv, whatever you want to say. Okay. So second cube x can be written as second square x and second x dx right second x if you go through l i a t e trick both are trick functions but here power is just one here too so i would like to consider this as u and this as v another thing is why i'm choosing why i'm choosing this one as v, v because we are taking integration of v in u into v rule and derivative of u derivative of u if i choose like this second x derivative of second x tangent x integration of second square x is tangent x right but if you do other way around it's difficult so just take like this second x tangent x integrations because u as it is integration of v minus sine of integral derivative of u is second x tangent x integration of second square x is tangent x just combine these two so you're going to get tangent square x so second x and tangent square x tangent square x can be written as second square x minus one so finally i'm getting over here second x tangent x minus sign this second x is multiplied with this bracket so second and second square is second cube x and second minus one is second x like this and don't forget this integral sign that means i'm converting my function like this look at over here guys second x tangent x minus second cube x dx and this one but second cube x means that's the example from where i've started with look at here so i would like to consider this as my i so that i can say this as i and i can send this i to other side so this i, other side, it is now i plus i is 2i. Here it is second x tangent x minus, sorry, plus integration of second x is, use your formula sheet, ln of absolute value of second x plus tangent x. This is the integration of second x. This way I can write i equal to, just divide by 2 throughout, so 1 by 2 and this part. So that is my, that is the answer. So when second cube x like this, always go for rule number three because n is odd. Fourth example, just tangent to the power 4x, tangent to the power 6x, like this. We can go for rule number four because rule number four says that n equal to zero, right, and m even. So 
So m is e1 n equal to 0 tangent square and tangent square. Tangent square can be raised. You can square minus 1. Multiply with this one, this one, and this, with, this one with this one. So you have two integrals. This tangent square x can be written as second square x minus 1. So we have now three integrals, one, this two, and this one is three. three integrals. If I take u equal to tangent x, derivative is second square x. So this first one is easy, u square du. Second square x and dx here and this one. Right, so integration of second square x, we know that one is simply tangent x. Integration of one is x, so it's very easy now. Simply tangent cube x divided by three minus tangent x plus x plus c. Look at here. So that's how you can solve the example based on the trig formation. Example number five, integration of tangent square x minus secant x dx. Tangent square x minus secant x dx. You can see over here, m is even, n is odd. To which rule? Rule number three. m is even, n is odd. Rule number three means you can either go for rule number one or two, right? So tangent square can be written as secant square x minus one and secant x dx. Then secant cube x and secant x dx. So secant cube x, again, you have to apply separately that rule. Just look at the previous example, example number three secant cube x. So I applied rule number three over here and found my integration of secant cube x. So you have to, whenever you have this type of example, you have to write separately. You have to calculate this term separately and get this one answer. Here I just wrote it down example and this one. So guys, please be careful. Trick people usually are facing some problems solving trick integrations. Please be careful. It's not hard. Only thing is you need to memorize some rules and then after you have to apply appropriate rule for the given examples. One formula I would like to give it to you, probably I think that's not in the book, but just look at over here. There is a, that is called Wallis formula. Sometimes what will happen that suppose you have cosine to the power 7x dx. Whatever rules I provided to you, these are just the rules for the uh, indefinite integral but you can apply the same thing for definite integral too if you are given the range of the integration right whenever you have cosine to the power nx dx maybe n equal to 9 10 11 what it may be suppose n equal to 12 suppose how can i get cosine to the power 12 x dx integration this formula well is formula that is applicable only if your range of integration is 0 to pi by 2. If it is suppose 0 to pi by 3 or pi by 6 or some other thing, it is not applicable. Please keep in mind this thing. So Wallis formula, the integration 0 to pi over 2 particularly, cosine to the power nx dx. Always reduce your power by 1, I mean start your power 1 less in the numerator and then reduce power by number 2 for each term. Then minus one, then two less, minus three, five, seven, and finally you will be getting two. Automatically you will be getting two, don't worry. I will let you know. And denominator, you have to start with the same power and then reduce by two, n, n minus two, n minus four. So you can see here n, n minus one, n minus two, n minus three, n minus four, n minus five, like this, right? So all my all terms like this, n minus one, three, five, in the numerator, and n, n minus two, four, six, uh, two, four, six, finally you will be getting three. Definitely. But that is possible only if your n is odd number. Greater than or equal to 3. Why 3? Because if you have square, cosine square, cosine square, just go back to trick formulation, just the first part, sine to the power m, cosine to the power n, and rule number 3. Square means you can write cosine square x as 1 plus cosine 2x by 2. Right? So, immediately you can use that trigonometric formula to get the integration or convert this power in terms of a linear power, right? But if this is possible, if your power is higher than three, three or higher than three, same here. As I told you, suppose n equal to 10, so 10 is even or odd, 10 is even number. Even means I'm going to use this second part, not the first part, even. For whenever even number is there, you have to multiply lastly by pi by two. 
Even number is there, that means again you are going to use the same formula. See, n minus 1, n minus 3, n minus 5. But for even number, you are going to get 1 over here. For odd, it was 2 here. In the denominator, you are going to get 2 over here. For odd, 3 over here. So finally, for odd number, we are multiplying by 2 by 3. Here we are multiplying by 1 by 2 and then pi by 2. As I told you, suppose my n equal to 10. If n equal to 10, 10 minus 1, I will start like this. 10 minus 1 means 9, then reduced by 2. 9, then 7, then 5, then 3, and then 1. See, I'm getting my 1. Are you getting me, Rachel? All girls? All girls, are you getting me? Yes, sir. All yes, of sir. you girls, boys? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Good. Yes, sir. So, n equal to 10, so 10 minus 1 is 9, then 7, then 5, then 3, and then 1. See? Stop it. Now, n equal to 10 minus 2, so 8, 6, 4, and 2. See? I'm getting the same thing. Automatically, you will get if you use the proper form. And then multiply by 7, pi by 2. And that will be the answer. So, such a big power integration can be answered or you can take the integration just very easily using the Wallis formula, right? Suppose n equal to odd, suppose I take n equal to seven. So seven means I can start with seven minus for the six, four and two, look at here. And n equal to seven, so seven, five, three. See, I'm getting three. And whatever multiplication in numerator and denominator you are getting, that quotient will be the answer. Look at here. Simple. See, such a big integral, big power can be integrated. This function can be integrated very easily using this policy formula. Only thing is your integration range must be 0 to 5 by 2. If it is not there, go back to your trick formulation, part 1. Okay, guys, so I just finished the sine to the power mx cosine to the power nx, second to the power mx, I'm sorry, tangent to the power mx, second to the power nx dx, m or e1, blah, blah, blah. Right? I did this thing. So I just want you, I just want you to go through all these things. Please practice these examples. Go to number of examples. First of all, solve the same examples, whatever we have gone through in our class. And then after you can start the practice test problems. Practice test problems, yeah. But don't uh, try to attempt any practice test problem without going through the examples I took in the class. Otherwise, you will face problem at so many points and you will be stuck. So don't do this thing, please. Okay. So whatever we did so far, that was just for the power sine to the power m, cosine to the power n, tangent to the power m, secant to the power n. But my question is, what will happen if I, if I don't have power, but I have a bigger angle? Bigger angle means sine 7x, just not sine x, cosine x, but sine bracket 7x, cosine 50x. We don't know if we have a bigger angle, how can we solve those, uh, those examples, right? For that, again, this formula are given, I think on page two of the formula set, very first day I provided to you, we are going to use that formula. It is, I think, little bit bottom part, below your half page, set page number two. Not exactly on the bottom, but little bit between middle and the bottom part you're going to get this formula. So keep in mind this thing. I'm See how to memorize this formula. That is the biggest, I mean, that's the big thing. So what I would suggest you, just memorize these four forms, which I'm going to give it to you. My first form is S plus S equal to 2SC. S minus S equal to 2CS. C plus C equal to 2CC. C minus C equal to negative 2 SS. Please try to memorize these four forms. Try to memorize these four forms or you please write it down. Where your S stands for your sine function, you can say sine X plus sine X equal to 2 sine X cosine X, like this. S minus X means sine X minus or sine 3X minus sine 2X, something like that, different angles. 
c plus c means cosine 5x plus cosine 2x. c minus c means cosine 5x minus cosine 2x equal to negative of 2 sine. Now, whenever you are going, you are going for the product, look at over here, 2 s plus s equal to 2 sc. So, 2 sine and cosine. For first sign, look at my pen. For first sign, we are going to add, add means addition the angles. Here we are going to subtract the angles. We are going to subtract the angles. One more thing. Suppose I am getting sine 5x here and sine 9x here. I would, con I would consider this one in a reverse form without loss of generality. You can consider this one as sine 9x plus sine 5x. If you are given sine five x, always start. I would prefer you prefer to start with the bigger angle. So always write your expression in the bigger form. As for example, suppose I write like this. Suppose I want to find sine of five x and plus sine of seven x. Suppose I want to find like this. Actually, this is the other form. So I would say that the way around, yeah, 2 sine 5x, sine 7x dx. Suppose I want to go for this integration. Just don't look at this one, just forget it. I am working with the first one, first rule. And suppose I want sine 5x sine 7x dx agree please pay your full attention guys if you are not getting me stop me you can ask multiple questions to me i don't mind i am telling you i am i'm asking you right now the integration of sine 5x sine 7x first of all i am going to be very precise writing my angles that means I would prefer to write sine 5x and sine 7x. Look at the difference now. Sine 5x, sine 7x. Agree? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Now, as I told you that I would like to go for bigger angle first. So, I'm going to write sine of 7x and sine of 5x and dx. And I'm not losing anything. Agree? I'm not changing my function. Yes or no? Yes, yes or no? If you are leaving our meeting, please let me know first. Okay? If you want to use the restroom or like this, let me know. Okay. Now, my formula is for, so I have my first term. Now look at my pen. Sine and sine. Look at the underline. S and S. Sine and sine. Agree? Yes or no? Yes, yes sir. sir. Formula, my first, first formula says that is two. I have used sine and sine, right? Okay. Now, where my sine and sine lies? In which formula? Product of two signs. Product of two signs lie. In which form out of these four form, look at the right hand side, product means right side. Here product, here it is just addition, subtraction. Product means here. Where my S times S lies? Uh, bottom um, one. Last one, right? Negative two S, S. Agree? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. S times S lies over here. See, you, can't, you don't find S times S anywhere over here. Just S times S lies over here. But I want the additional factor negative 2. Am I right? Yes, sir. How many times I told you, you can play with the constant. So just divide and multiply it by negative 2. So let me divide and let me multiply by negative 2. Shall I write like this? <coughs> yes or no? Yes, sir. Once I have this one, so I have now negative 2 SS form. My formula says that negative 2 SS can be written in the form of C minus C. Agree? Yes or no? My first form. You get the last, last, last formula. Yes, sir. Yeah. C minus C equal to negative 2 SS. Agree? 
So this sure. two S's can be written in the form of C. C stands for cosine function. So this can be written as negative one by two integration cosine minus cosine and dx. Shall I write like this? Intentionally, I left some space between these two functions, cosine and cosine. As I told you, your first, your first function that is for addition, addition of the angle will be here. Here you have a subtraction of angles. What is my angle? 7x and 5x, agree? So 7x plus 5x and here it is. So I can write like this. Here it is 7x plus 5x by 2. 7x plus 5x and here it is 7x minus 5x. Agree guys? 7x plus 5x and 7x minus 5x. Yes or no? First addition and then subtraction. Are you getting me? Yes, yes sir. sir. Yes, sir. Now the ball is in your court because what I did, this bigger angle, I used this formula or one of the formulas just to write my bigger angle in a separate form, just linear form. So I can write it down like this. That is equal to negative 1 by 2 and cosine of 5x plus 7x plus 5x is cosine of 12x and cosine of 7 minus that is cosine of 2x. Right, cosine of 12x and cosine of 2x. Look at here. Look at here. Look at here. Okay. Okay. And what is the derivative of cosine 12? Oh, sorry, integration of cosine 12x. Integration of cosine x is sine x. Agree? So sine 12x. And your angle is 12x now. I told you yesterday, you can go for 12x equal to u or like this, or sine 12x divided by 12 minus sine 2x divided by 2 plus constant of integration. This will be my answer. Look at here. This will be the answer. Are you getting me, guys? So then you can use the formula, all four formula according to the given example, which type of product is asked to you. So in the example, in the examination, you will be asked the product of, means some product of integration of product of two functions over here, sine and cosine with some bigger angles. Sine and cosine. And you are going to convert using this formula or one of the formulas, you are going to convert that one in terms of this addition or subtraction and then go for term by term integration. That's it. I have a question. Right, guys? Yes, please. Go ahead. You want, first of all, you want me to send this page to John? Yes, please. Yes, please, sir. I will. Um, what's the difference in the product for sine plus sine and sine minus sine? Sine plus sine and sine minus sine? Yeah, the first two. Look at here. In first two, you are given the s plus s is to sc so whenever your sine function stands first and then cosine function go for s plus s whenever cosine function stands for and sine function then go for s minus s as for example as i told you that always try to write the bigger function first if i give you let me give you one example this is just like the same thing then. no it's not same that's what i'm telling you uh suppose i ask you integration cosine of 7x sine of 4x dx cosine of 7x which one is a bigger angle which one is a bigger angle cosine 7 so cosine is a bigger angle agree yes sir sine is a smaller angle so i have i can't interchange this one because bigger angle usually we write first okay. our formula says that look at the second formula you can't use the first formula right now because first formula wants to SC, sine first and then cosine. You have in this example, cosine first and then sine. Cosine first and then sine. If I divide and multiply by two, I'm going to use S minus S. That means if I write, if I divide and multiply by two, 
So that is equal to one by two integration cosine is sine uh, cosine seven x plus four x minus sine seven x minus four x and dx. Shall I write like this? Look at here. And that's why I have used negative sign because my cosine function is a bigger cosine function is cosine function has a big big angle than the sign. Make sense? Yes, sir. Right? And then right. go for the integration. Then go for the integration. So here sine that is equal to 11x, and here it is. 3x so integration of sine is negative cosine so 1 by 2 negative of cosine of 11x by 11 minus minus plus cosine of 3x by 3 and plus c shall i write like this the last line yes or no Yes, sir. Any doubt, guys, girls? Virginia Pardee, are you here? Okay, guys. Now look at here. In your book, the rule is given in this way: sine mx, sine nx dx, m and n, any any angle. Usually, I prefer that m is bigger than n. M is bigger than n, like this. So s and s means product of two. Two s divided and multiplied by two. Two s s. Right. See, look at here. Two s s. Two s s. That is associated with c minus c. My fourth rule. In your book, it is given like this, but I would appreciate if you can refer these four formulas of what I gave it to you. And I will take the picture and send it to John. Don't worry about it. Same here, cosine mx, sine nx, like this. And look at over here, exactly same thing, my first formula. Just ignore this part. If you are good with these first four forms, whatever the formula are given here in the book, same thing. Let me start with this one. See, sine 5x cosine 3x. Let me divide and multiply it by 2 so that I, I will be having 2sc form. 2sc means 2sc. Can you see my first form 2sc? Look at the right hand side, please, because products are there on right side. So 2sc yes, plus, plus s. S plus s. So I have to write sine, sine plus sine. First of all, sine 5x plus 3x is 8x because first addition, then subtraction. So 5x plus 3x, 8x, and 5x minus 3x, that is equal to 2x. Integration of sine 8x is negative cosine 8x by 8, negative cosine 2x by 2, and you are done. Simple. Only thing is, just follow these four rules. You will not find this four rule, whatever I wrote it down over here, probably in the book. You are going to get the rules like this, whatever is mentioned over here on the beginning of the page, like this but not whatever I explained to you over here. But this is way easier than you than the big forms to be memorized, right? Just like, uh, just go through this one and that will help you a lot. Make sense? Second example, look at here. Sine x and sine cos cosine 2x dx. Which angle is bigger? Cosine, right? So let me write cosine because I can, this is just a product. So I can write this one first and this one second. But now, this 2 divided and multiplied by 2, so 2CS changes my formula. 2CS means now, here it was given S and C. If I divide and multiply it over here at the first level, that means it is 2SC, first form. 2SC, first form. But if I convert like this, my bigger angle first, means I'm changing my formula to CS, means second form. Second form. Change to, to CS and then just proceed further, just like this, and you will be getting the answer. One more example sine 3x, sine 7x, bigger angle first, and blah, blah, blah. Same thing, right? 
try to focus on this thing. I give you two, three minutes. Yes, I don't want to start a new article. Just go through this one, all of you. And after two, three minutes, we will start the new article. By that time, I can send this page to John. Um, I sent the YouTube link and a screenshot of the sine cosine rules uh, in the group chat. Uh, let me know okay. if you guys can see it. I'm not getting you. What is it? Uh, I sent the screenshot of the uh, sine cosine rules that you were showing us in mm -hmm. the chat. Uh, yeah. You sent the scene scrolls? Yes, what? sir. I took a screenshot and then I sent that to everyone. Yo, you already sent to everyone. That sounds good. So nice of you. Yes. Thank you. I appreciate. Good. Even though, let me send this one, this page to you guys, may be helpful to you. <laughs> guys let me do one thing virginia is not here since a long period of time let me send the email to her so just give me a minute D-E-W, let me, I think I have her phone number, so let me call her first. Five, seven, nine.
Okay, guys. I hope all is well at her end, but I don't know why I couldn't see her. And uh, guys, I request all all of you please remain present in the, in time in the morning. I took the presence, and three four guys were absent today. If you have joined the meeting before I, I mean, say after I took the presence, please let me know. I call your name, and I did not find you you online at the time so if you join the meeting after the presence please let me know please is anyone there um sir i'm not sure if you got me on roll i i got you okay thank you sir mm -hmm. did you get me sir Who? i joined at eight what's the name albertson no i called your name three to four times and you were not there Try to come in time, please, because your name is is the first is in the first row. I mean, say first in the roster. Yes, sir. Yeah. So please try to come in time. Okay, good. So you are here. Then who is the next one? Uh, I'm sure I'm here, but um. Albert son. Who? Who? Who is there? Who is there? Somebody just spoke, right? Who is there? Will you please let me know? Ishmael, Ishmael is here. I emailed you though. Ishmael, okay, okay. So I got you too. Then uh, I want uh, Peyton, Rain Gruber Peyton. Yes, sir. Oh, he's here. Yeah, okay, I'm sorry. And then Rice Simon. Rice Simon. Hmm, I don't know what's wrong with him. Williamson Thomas. I'm here, sir. Oh, you are here. Yeah, you're good. Yes. So I think, uh, yeah, all other guys are there. But uh, if you have joined the meeting before I took the presence, please let me know right now. Otherwise, I have to send a message to the summer session office and the registrar's office. So don't uh, give me hard time. Don't give the hard time to yourself. Okay, that sounds good. And I want everybody to be present here around 7.35 tomorrow morning, right? Good, 7.30, 7.35, yeah. Okay, guys, so let's continue. Yeah, I'm getting the message from the summer office, see? Huh, what is this? Okay, guys, let's continue. So it's a matter of partial fraction. Again, guys, today's class is very, very, very important for you. Please work hard, guys, please. Method of partial fraction. You know that. Derivative is not linear in multiplication, and so the integration, and that's why we went over the u into v rule, Liet rule, in the last section, right? Last to last section, I would say, Article 6.2. Same with the division. Derivative is not linear in division, and that's why we went for the quotient rule, low d high minus high d low divided by low square, right? In your calc one, and so the integration. So whenever you have a product of two functions in the denominator, and if you are looking for the integration, it's not possible. You have to first convert your function in some linear factors like this. Look at over here, x minus a, x minus b, x minus c, product of three functions over here. 
and I converted that one in terms of A over some, some constant over this one plus, plus sign is there or minus sign is there. B over this one, C over this one. Right guys, C over this one. And then you can go for the integration. Only thing is how to find this A, B and C. How to find this A, B and C. Am I right? How to find this A, B and C. So there are different types of products, products in the denominator. The first one is, look at where x to the power one. Excuse me, sir. Uh, we can't see your screen. You cannot see the screen? Are you sure? I don't believe you're sharing your screen. I can see it. I can see it. Yeah. Oh, that might just be me. Yeah, it's just you. Just try to fix a problem. Everyone can see the screen. I can wait for a minute if you want. I can't hear you now. What are you doing? Chris. Is it okay? Is it okay? No, I can't hear you. I'm going to leave the Zoom and try rejoining. I think okay. my Zoom isn't working. Okay. So let me continue this thing, guys. So linear form, whenever here you can see the power is just one, power of x is one, and whole power x minus a is one. Here also power of x is one, whole power is one, power of x is one, and whole power is one. This is called a linear factor, linear form. Whenever your linear form, always consider that one as a over x minus a, b plus b over x minus b plus c over x minus c, and then going to find a, b, and c. a, b, and c. Then sometimes you have repeated linear factors. Repeated linear factor means x minus one. See, power of x is simply one, but you have repeated forms. So x minus a times x minus a, same thing, x minus one, x minus one, and x minus two, like this. So x minus a square. Whenever you have this form at that time, you can consider like this. Please guys, please pay attention. A over x minus a, just power one, and then write x minus two, x minus a square. So a over x minus a plus b over x minus a square plus c over x minus b. Please try, you have to memorize these four forms. Otherwise you cannot proceed further for the partial fraction, please. Look at the differences. Here my a, b and c all are different. So I write it down a, b plus a, b and c constants. Here I have square is there. One factor is repeated twice. So x minus a to the power one, then x minus a to the power two. A, B, and then the separate factor C. You have sometimes quadratic factor, X square something, X square minus A, or A X square plus B X plus C. Whenever square is there, and you can consider bracket, bracket here too. Look at, please pay attention, Judith. Bracket here, bracket here, and power one. So its power is just one, but quadratic function is there. In that case, your assumptions would be ax plus b divided by ax squared plus bx plus c, the whole part. So here it should be ax plus b, ax plus b. Sometimes you have repeated quadratic form. So quadratic form, here power was just one, but here power is two. That means just like this one, x minus a square. So same, suppose two x squared plus three x plus two and whole square. Whenever you have whole square, something like that, repeated quadratic form, for First quadratic form, just like this one, first linear form, a over x minus a. So first quadratic form, ax plus b over ax square plus bx plus c. And for this repeated quadratic form, another two constants, cx plus d over ax square plus bx plus c. So please keep these four forms in mind. And then we start the examples. Examples are simple, look at here. Suppose I want, the integration of one over x square minus one. It's a quotient. See, and we don't know how to take the integration of a quotient form. If it is one over x square, you can use power rule, x to the power negative two and use power rule and you can get the answer very easily. But x square minus one is there. So first of all, let me take the factors, x minus one, x plus one. Now, let me write separately, x minus one, let me remove the integral sign just for the sake of convenience. So x minus one, x plus one. 
x minus x plus one, that means a linear factor, x to the power one, minus one, x plus one, power one, power one. So A over first factor, B over second factor. So A over first factor, B over second factor. We are interested in finding this A and B. So one over x minus one, x plus one, A x plus one plus B x minus one divided by x minus one, x plus one. x minus one, x plus one. Right guys, x minus one, x plus one. And then after, take the LCM. So A cross multiplication, what is LCM? x minus one, x plus one. So multiply here x minus one, x plus one, x minus one, x minus one will get canceled out and A is multiplied by x plus one. Same here, LCM is x minus one, x plus one, multiply here x plus one, x plus one will get canceled out and B is multiplied by x minus one. And common part is x minus one, x plus one. Just remove these common denominators from both sides and you are getting one equal to AX, open the bracket, AX plus BX plus A minus B. Always write down in the descending order of x. Whatever the factors you are getting over here after this step, write it down in the descending factors of x. So here, a plus b common x to the power one. Constant and means x to the power zero. And right hand side, one can be written as zero times x to the power one because I want to compare with this x to the power one. I don't have x any x over here on left side. So I would like to write zero times x to the power one. And then one can be written as one times x to the power zero, but because x to the power zero is simply one. So one can be written as one times x to the power zero. Why? Because if I do like this, if I write like this, I can compare my powers, x to the power one and x to the power one. So a plus b equal to zero and a minus b equal to one. So a plus b equal to zero, a minus b equal to one. Solve these two, two equations. B, B will get canceled out to a equal to one, so a equal to half. If you plug this a equal to half in any one of these two equations, you're going to get b equal to B equal to negative half. Once you get your A and B, go back and plug it back over here in your assumption. So A equal to half, B equal to negative half, would be something like this. A equal to half, constant, pull it out. B equal to negative half, constant, pull it out. And one over X minus A, one over X plus A. One over X minus A, this one, X plus A, this one. And we are looking for the integration, sorry. Yeah, we are looking for the integration. We are looking for this integration for the same factor. So take the integration both the sides. If you take the integration, just wait guys. If you take the integration, you're going to get like this, one over x minus one. Integration of x minus one is ln function because x minus one derivative is one, x plus one derivative is one. Hello? Hello? Sorry, I'm busy. So one by two x minus one and negative one by two ln of x plus one. Use ln property, one by two common, x minus one minus, minus means division. So ln of x minus one over x plus one plus c and you are done. x minus one x plus one and you are done. I have used this ln properties over here for this example. I wrote it down just in the side of the page for you guys. This is the example from your practice test. Yeah, I'm going to post very soon, very soon, 100% today. I need to figure it out first. This second example, be careful. X minus one and X plus two square means this is second type. X minus one, X to the power one, year one. X to the power one, and here it is two, means twice. So A over first factor, B over X plus two and C over this power. A over X minus one, B over X plus two and C over X plus two power. That means this is of this type, this one. A over X minus one, here power is here. And then again, repeat the same power and this one separate, just like this one. So it is second. The second form, you can write like this, AX, now open this one because I have to write this one, this expression in the descending order of X. So let me open the bracket, X square plus two X, four X plus four, FOIL, FOIL method, product of two functions, two polynomials, 
x square my plus x minus two and c x minus one. You can find x square highest derivative here, uh, highest power of x here, highest power of x here. Separate them out. So a plus b and x square out. Now I have one x over here, one x over here, and one x over here. So let me take this four a constant here, then one times b constant here, then one times c constant here and outside x. Then I have all my constants four a minus two b minus c. 4a minus 2b minus c. Right, guys? And my left hand side is simply 1. I have x square, x to the power 1, and x to the power 0. Descending order of x. That's what I'm writing here. 1 can be written as 0 times x square, 0 times 1, and 1 times x to the power 0 is 1. So 1 times 1 is 1. So 1 can be written in this form. If you compare a plus b equal to 0, 4a plus b plus c equal to 0 and 4a minus 2b minus c equal to 0. Now guys, you must know how to use the calculator. Of course, you can solve these three equations and you can get the same answer, but it's time consuming. I will allow you to use the calculator for this one and that will make, you know, reduced to isolon for matrix, right? Matrices. Yes or no guys? If no, then please play yes, with your cell phone. No, yes, I'm sorry. Play with your calculator and REF. That is one of the commands. So write your matrix, write your matrix, and then give REF. REF known as is known as reduced row echelon form. That means here the coefficient is one. Look at here one, then b. There is no c, so zero c. And right hand side zero. Coefficient is four one one four one one. 4, negative 2, negative 1, and right hand side is 1. So I can write like this, 4, 1, 1, 1, 0, 4, 1, 1, 4, negative 2, and 1, and dotted line, 0, 0, and 1, right side. This stands for A, B, and C like this. This is my 3 by 4 matrix. So in your cell, uh, calculator, just first set up the size of the matrix, 3 by 4. Enter these numbers, 1, 0, actually 3 by 4, 3 rows, 3 and 4 columns. So three by four, right? Do this thing and then give the command REF. That's the command in your calculator. If you give this command, you have to go for math and then command like this. You are going to get this one as the answer. If you are getting some decimals over here, convert that decimal to fraction. You know how to do this thing. So this is called the reduced to echelon form. Reduced to echelon form, that means it is a kind of identity matrix. See, 1001. That means this first one corresponds to my A, second one corresponds to B, third one corresponds to C. That means my A equal to 1 by 9, B equal to negative 1 by 9, C equal to negative 1 by 3. Look at here, A equal to 1 by 9, B equal to negative 1 by 9, C equal to negative 1 by 3. Plug these values in your assumptions of A, B, and C, whatever you have assumed over here in your star equation. A, B, and C, plug the values, A, B, and C. Take your constant, just pull it out, constant pull it out, because all are constants, just pull it out, and then go for the integration. Integration of this term, integration of this term, and this term. And you are ended up with this one. This is the given example. A is 1 by 9, integration of 1 over x minus 1. Negative 1 by 9, integration of 1 over x plus 2. 1 over x plus 2 square dx, right? C is negative 1 third. This one is easy because derivative of x minus 1 is 1 appears here in the numerator. So ln, integration is ln. Same here, integration ln x plus 2. x minus x plus 2 square. If I take x plus 2 equal to u, u equal to x plus 2, du equal to dx. If you use u sub over here, it is simply 1 over x plus 2. So this is your answer. You, if you want, you can take this 1 by 9 common and ln of x minus 1 divided by x plus 2, just like a previous example. Or you can leave this one as the answer. I don't know. It. That sounds good to me. Is it okay? Is it okay, guys? Yes, sir. I know I'm giving you lots of things today, but I'm sorry, guys, you chose this summer course and everyone, everything goes really very fast. First time to say that we have to finish the syllabus just in four weeks, right? So please cooperate me, please work hard. 
always i am here you know that i am always responding you guys if somebody sends the email to me always i am just replying him just within an hour like this i am checking myself on my emails more than 7 to 8 times a day trust me guys so i request you unless you have the emergency or quick question please don't bother me because you know one guy i will not disclose the name send more than 10 emails to me just in one day is not possible guys i am getting tired i have 35 students and 35 students are sending 10 emails to me a day 350 emails i will be mad if i reply 350 emails right please cooperate me guys now if you have some emergency some urgent questions of course you are welcome i keep my eyes open to get back to you soon okay guys okay so that is second example and this is the last one because i know i have given you lots of things over here today so that's why i just would like to stop after this example because if i continue giving you all the new things probably you will get tired you are tired it looks and i don't want you to get tensed i just want you to work on each and every topic everything and get confident last example and we'll stop suppose i have integration x cube over x minus 5 and x plus 2 this example is interesting why because if i multiply this denominator i am going to get you don't have to but if i multiply i am going to get x square minus 2x minus 15 look at here then what will happen my power of numerator is 3 and power of denominator is 2 so my power of numerator is higher than denominator and you know that just article 6.1 when power of numerator is greater than or equal to denominator one has to first go for the long division method so that's what i am doing here first so x cube and x square minus 2x minus 15 i have to multiply it by 1x so that i can have x cube over here so x cube minus 2x square minus 15x if you change the sign this will get cancel out and left out things are 2x square plus 15x Now two x square plus fifteen x. Only I am having x square, so let me just multiply it by two plus two, plus two, so plus two. So I am getting two x square minus four x minus thirty, minus thirty. I want to cancel this one, so let me just change the signs throughout. Minus plus plus. This will get cancelled out. Fifteen plus four is nineteen, and thirty plus thirty, my remainder, my quotient. So this one, you know, that long division reduces the power, right? So. this factor can be now written in the form of x plus 2 the quotient plus your remainder divided by this term so x plus 2 plus and you can see here now the power of numerator is strictly less than the denominator so i can proceed further this integration is quite easy x cube x square by 2 plus 2x term by term integration here let me go for my linear factors like this of course you can one can work with the quadratic term too but linear is easier always than the quadratic Okay, guys. So this x square minus two x minus fifteen. Let me just go back and write it down in the same form. X minus five x plus three. X plus three. I am now working only with this part because this one is done only with this. Part. So nineteen x plus thirty divided by this x minus five x plus three. Again, it is case one because x to the power one whole to the power one x to the power one whole to the power one. There is no repetition of repetition of factors and linear forms. So a over x minus five plus b over x plus three. Nineteen x plus thirty a over x. Just take the LCM a x plus three b x minus five. Common denominator will get cancelled out. So nineteen x to the power one and thirty x x to the power one a x and b x. So a plus b and x and constant terms. Compare the coefficients. You will get a plus b equal to ninety three a minus five b equal to thirty. Whenever I have three equations or more than three at that time. matrix is preferable because uh, maximum chances are there for you guys to make the mistake but if you have two equations you can just use simple algebra you can use matrix over here too it's your choice i just want the right method right answer so if i solve these two equations just multiply this by 5 so that this will get cancel out and here it is 8 equal to 125 so 8 equal to 125 by 8 and then plug this value of a in any one of these two equations and you're going to get the value of b Or you can use your matrix. Just go back and plug this value of a and b over here. Look at my cursor, very first line, a and b, and go for the integration. Constant, pull it out, one twenty-five by eight, and let me pull it out. B, let me pull it out, and go for the integration. If you go for the integration, you will get 
x minus 5 derivative is 1, x plus 3 derivative is just 1. So that means I can use ln function for the integration. And this is y. This, whatever I figured it out, that was just for this part. But that was not the example. My example was different. See, that was just, a, just this part. Don't forget to add this term because the given example was this one. So finally, you are getting this one as the answer. Agree. Agree, guys. Please say something. Good, sir. Excellent. Yes, sir. So, from example, yes, yeah, page number 24, this we are going to start tomorrow. Right now, let me stop over here. I just want, don't go for this one, just go for whatever we have covered till page number 23. And I will see you tomorrow at our regular time. Sounds good. Yes, sir. Yeah. Right. How many of you sure. think that uh, how many of you think that it is difficult for you to get up early in the morning? Please be honest. Be honest. It's not too bad. Uh, just one minute. Let me. Yeah. Please go ahead. Yes. Uh, yes. One. Cooper. Yes. Then second. Second one is. Please. Okay. Thomas Williamson. Third one. Go ahead. I think John Marshall left, but I know it's John fun. Marshall, he 